أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We have reached the third part of the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the first hadith of the 40 hadith collection of Imam al-Nawawi uh, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ uh, Before uh, I start uh, translating and uh, explaining the uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this third part of the hadith, I uh, just wanted to mention, um, that mention that I am currently in the Fatih Jami of Istanbul. Um, as you can see in the background, it is a very beautiful masjid. Uh, it, w- it is actually the most popular masjid, I believe, in, in the city of Istanbul. Um, so going back to the hadith, we, um, we covered uh, the first part of the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, the validity of actions is uh, by nothing other than their intentions. And the second part of the hadith, we also mentioned, we also translated and explained uh, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى And indeed, every person will get nothing except what they intended. Now the third part of the hadith, uh, which says, uh, which in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Whoever's migration is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then his or her migration is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pro- his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so as you could uh, tell that this is a conditional statement uh, and usually with conditional statements you have the um, the hypothesis has to be different than the conclusion right I mean, the fir- in a, in a condi- conditional statement, the hypothesis is what uh, comes after if, and the conclusion is what comes after then. But we see in this uh, in this conditional statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the hypothesis is the same as the conclusion, which is very strange. Um, that is not how Arabs used to speak, and that is not how any um, the people of any language speak, right? The hypothesis always is different than, than the conclusion and the conclusion usually indicates a, uh, either a positive consequence of the condition which is mentioned in the hy- hypothesis or a negative consequence of the condition so here uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, basically has made the hypothesis the same as the conclusion and the conclusion the same as the hypothesis just to give, an, give you an example uh, so you it will make more sense to you it wouldn't make sense for me to tell someone if you come to my house, then you come to my house, right? I would perhaps say, if, if it was a positive conclusion, uh, if, it, if the hypo- condition had a positive con- uh, consequence, I would say something like, if you study, you will pass, right? I wouldn't say, if you study, then you study. If you study, then you will pass. And if the uh, consequence is negative, I would say, if you uh, don't study, then you will fail, right? The, con- the failing is a negative consequence. So here, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, obviously, from we know from the context of the hadith that the consequence needs to be positive, right? Whoever migrates to Allah and His Messenger, then the consequence has to be positive. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam makes the conclusion the same as the hypothesis, right? What is the wisdom behind it? Um, so if you think about it, there are no better consequences than being with the Prophet, being with Allah and His Prophet, right? So if you migrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to His Prophet, then you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. Then you have migrated to the being who has created you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have migrated to the messenger of that being who has created you, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What better consequence can you have than being with and migrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the wisdom behind, um, one of the uh, uh, wisdoms behind this part of the hadith. And of, of course there have been other uh, explanations of why 
the hypothesis, the conclusion is the same as the hypothesis. But uh, the, mo the one that has appealed, me, uh, appealed to me the most is the, what I have just mentioned to you. Um, the, the, pos the consequence is positive, but you cannot have a better consequence than being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Messenger. Hence, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam includes the same thing that he has included in the hypothesis in the conclusion of, the, of this conditional statement. Um, Wallahu alam. And so hijra, what does it hijra mean in the context of this hadith? Obviously hijra has, you know, uh, if we, we're talking about the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hijra has a specific meaning. It is the migration of Muslims from Mecca to other parts of the, of the, uh, of Arabia, right? Um, to uh, Arabia or um, mainly to, obviously to, uh, to uh, Mad Medina. Um, so this type of migration is no longer uh, no longer exists because uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la hijra ba'd al fath there is no hijra there is no migration after the conquest of uh, of mecca uh, the reason the muslims migrated from mecca to medina was because they were uh, they were trying to protect and preserve their religion, right? So they migrated to Mecca, to Medina, and after Mecca was uh, was conquered and opened, uh, then th there is, there was no need for anyone to migrate from Mecca to Medina. So that hijra for in in that context has stopped, right? So the Prophet ﷺ continues in the same hadith and says, "Walakin jihadun wa but however, jihad remains and also intentions remain, right? Jihad. Um, is basically fighting, defending the, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will remain till the day, of, the day of judgment. That will never stop. It is, um, it is a concept that will never be uh, uh, will, uh, uh, invalidated, right? It, uh, it's uh, it's uh, fighting uh, for, the, uh, for the freedom of the oppressed, right? It is fighting against the oppressor. It is protecting uh, the freedom of religion, right? It is protecting all the maqasid of, sh of al-sharia. It is protecting all of those maqasid. It is defending and fighting for those maqasid. So, so this is jihad, and this uh, it will remain till the, the day of judgment. Um, it is a struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that struggle will never cease to exist. Um, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, wa Now it is very interesting that we're kind of Going back to the beginning of the first uh, the, the the hadith that we're trying to explain right now, indeed the validity of actions is by uh, their niyas, right? So um, uh, what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us here is that even though migration or hijra is no longer something we can do, um, the intentions or what leads to that migration, which is the intention of a human being, that will remain till the the day of judgment right so as long as we have the intentions to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then we have received the reward of those who have migrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have received the words uh, the the rewards of those who have mig physically migrated to Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even though from uh, in our case it would be more like a spiritual migration it would be the spirit uh, the migration of the heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the scholars have also said uh, migration uh, it, it 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 will never um, in a different meaning uh, in a different context will never cease to exist and that is the migration of a person leaving from a land that uh, tries to stop him or her from practicing the religion to a land that does not, right? Um, so any land, and if we are living in a land in which we are not able to freely practice our religion, then it is a must upon us to uh, migrate and go uh, live in a land in which we are able to uh, practice our religion. So hijra in this sense uh, still remains and it will remain for uh, till the day of judgment. 